Well, hey there, good morning or good afternoon, depending on what part of the country you are calling in from. My name is Ginger Bell, and I will welcome you to the Finance of America Wholesale Mortgage, Taking Your Business Virtual. And in this webinar, we are going to go through how to set up and conduct virtual meetings for your borrowers. So as you're getting logged in today, um, I'm going to put the material we're using today that's going to go up in your chat box. And there's two different ways that you can listen today. You can either dial in from your phone or you can listen from your computer. And I am recording today's session and we'll send out a copy of the recording tomorrow um, by email along with the materials. So you'll be able to have access to that. And uh, if you're looking to go back and watch, um, because we are going through step-by-step -step on this webinar, then you can have that recording to look at as well. If you do have questions as we go throughout today's session, there's two different ways that you can ask questions. You can type them in the chat box or in the Q&A box. I will see um, both of those that'll come up. So as you're having, going through the information, if there's any questions that you have, I'll be reviewing those. Um, some I'll answer, especially if there seems to be some clarity that you need in a particular area. Um, otherwise, I will save some of those till the end. And I'm going to put the content up here again. So I have two different handouts for you. I have a copy of the slide deck. And then I've also created the step-by-step -step instructions in a handout. And I have pictures there. And it truly goes through step-by-step. -step. And that was the goal in creating this material, is to be able to give you a, a very comprehensive guide on how to use virtual meetings to conduct um, virtual meetings with your borrowers because that's the world we live in now. Uh, so we do have a great schedule of webinars that we have been conducting at Finance of America. We've got a couple left for this month and then we have a very exciting schedule we're putting together for May as well. And so that'll be out shortly. Um, but um, for right now, to our Thursday, today is Tuesday. Sometimes we forget what day of the week is in the new world we're living in. Um, so Thursday, we'll be doing a webinar on standing out in your marketplace. And I'll be talking about tech tools that you can use from things like Slide Dial and um, different texting platforms um, to bomb bomb and things like that so just things for you to be able to incorporate to communicate uh, with borrowers easier and then Wednesday next week I am holding a jump start cr to creating videos and so I'm going to go through how to create videos how to edit videos why you should be using videos, all those kind of things. So register for those two webinars. They're free, and you can find the information at famtpo.com. And so I'm going to do a quick little sound check, have you all just um, type in in the Q&A box or the chat box. Let me know that you can hear me and that you know how to ask questions, where you can put those at, so I know that you know how to ask questions and that I can see them. Melinda, we are good, good. Awesome, and I hope you guys are well. Um, it definitely is a challenging time right now, and webinars have been an incredible resource for us to be able to utilize. Very good, Harry, loud and clear, awesome. So let me know as the sound goes, you know, everyone's on the internet now, so sometimes we have things happen. Um, but we are secure on Zoom, just so you know, so there will be no surprises here. I can guarantee you that. <laughs> Awesome noon and your day is great. Thank you. Yes, my day is great too. And so for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Ginger Bell. I've had the pleasure of writing three best-selling books, two with Brian Tracy and one with Jack Canfield. I am an edu marketing specialist and um, I work with Finance of America to conduct webinars just like this, to go through um, products, technology, um, new things that are rolling out. We have some exciting things that are coming out and so I'm excited to be able to, to share some information with you. Um, honestly, in April, originally, what, when we had planned out March, um, in March, the schedule for April, we had a completely different schedule of webinars. And of course, when everything changed on March 13th, and most of us went into shelter in place, um, we had to scrap all of that and um, start creating some tools to be able to help you. And that's what we've done. So fortunately, um, I have been doing webinars since 2008 when we went through the last 
<laughs> I'm not saying when we went through the mortgage meltdown, this is not the <laughs> anything like the last one we went through. And it's not going to be. We're all just staying focused on that. Um, but I have conducted a lot of webinars and I have done a lot of virtual meetings. And so for me to be able to just move over and teach you all how to do this, I'm very excited about that. Because the reality is our world changed overnight, literally overnight. And we all had to learn new terms like social distancing and flatten the curve and shelter in place. And this was happening while rates hit historic lows. And so with that, you still need to communicate with your borrowers. But with the challenges that we have with the coronavirus, you can no longer meet with them face to face. And unfortunately, I think the reality is we're going to be living this way for a little while. And so it's time to adapt. And we're used to adapting in the mortgage industry. If you all have been in the industry for any length of time, you know that's what we're really good at is adapting. And so that's what we're going to do. Virtual meetings give us that opportunity to be able to still have that personal interaction with your borrowers. And that is so important to do that. And so today my goal is to provide you with virtual meeting software options to cover how to use virtual meetings, to instruct um, your staff on how to use virtual meetings because obviously it's important for them to be able to stay in touch with people, um, how to instruct your customers on how to use virtual meetings, um, which is very important because, you know, we may have become more familiar with it, but it can be challenging to instruct them on how to use that. So part of that's um, what's in the guide for you, and I'm going to post that back up again for those of you who have um, just hopped on. Um, we want to be able to have it easy for them, and the easier for them, the easier it is for you. And so we're going to cover how to invite your customers. And so with that, let's get started with what is a virtual meeting. And uh, you probably all have learned how to have virtual meetings. You may have had uh, virtual happy hours. I don't know. Has anybody had anything like that? Um, I've heard of people doing virtual workouts. And let me know what kind of things that you're doing virtually that you have been able to expand into in your life because it definitely has um, bridged over from using virtual meetings for just business meetings to using it for social meetings. And I think we're going to see that continue for a while. So let me know some of the things that you've done. Have you done the virtual happy hours? Have you done virtual meetings with your family. I know my uh, my husband's family is in Dallas, Texas, and we've set up weekly meetings to have a virtual family meeting from across the country. So those are some of the things that have been an advantage. Um, John, virtual cocktails via Zoom. Yes, I have done that as well, virtual happy hours, um, which is great. I saw somebody the other day that they were playing poker virtually. Not sure how that worked. Um, some people are doing like hap um, watching um, shows. So Camp Gladiator, Melinda, that's interesting. That's a new one. I haven't heard of that. I have no idea what that is. You'll have to tell me. And Noon, you've been having virtual, virtual dates. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that's hard. Yeah. Oh. Well, at least you can still see each other. So it sounds like you guys are getting familiar with how to use virtual meetings. And they're really easy to conduct. All you need for a virtual meeting is um, an internet connection or um, a mobile connection on your mobile phone. You need audio, and that can either be through your computer or your telephone, um, and that's through your speakers and a microphone. Or and, and you also need a webcam. And that can either be through your computer or your telephone. So those are the things that you need in order to conduct a virtual meeting. There are some, um, there's actually a few different um, conferencing technologies out there. Some are better than others. Um, what we're going to be going through today is Zoom, and it's one that I use a lot. And I'm going to talk about the reference as far as security, because I know there have been some things in the news about security with Zoom. So I'm going to tell you how to make sure that you are secure in what you're setting up. 
because that's important. Um, there's another um, platform that's called Join Me, and a lot of millennials use that. GoToMeeting has been around for a while. So GoToMeeting has been around longer than Zoom, and it's what we used to use a lot. I switched to Zoom about three years ago um, because it offers more flexibility and I think it's easier to use and it's also more cost effective. And then Skype. And so I know a lot of companies use Skype as well. So those are the different platforms. If you're looking for information on each of them, I have the website that I've listed on the slide deck so you can access that. So Zoom is zoom.us. Join me is join.me. Go to meeting is just that, go to meeting.com, and then Skype is Skype.com. So if you um, are not going to use Zoom and you want to look into the other ones, you can do that. But let's talk about using virtual meetings. And I don't have time on this webinar to go through each of those platforms. So I'm just going to go through Zoom because it's the one that's used the most and it's the one that I know the best. So let's talk about Zoom video conferencing. Zoom allows you to use your computer or your phone camera to hold a virtual video meeting and now your prospects can see your beautiful smiling face. They can connect with you personally by putting, as we say, a name with a face. And you can also see them and establish trust and likability with them. And we know that's very important in what we're doing in setting up relationships with borrowers. So where can you use virtual meetings in your process? Obviously, the initial application is the first thing that you think of. So if they filled out an online application, you want to be able to set up a meeting with them. But there's other areas that you can use virtual meetings as well, such as documentation upload. You can do a screen share, and you can show them how to upload documentation. Next month, I'm going to do a webinar on how to use Zoom to do screen share. And so you'll want to get registered for that. Look for the dates. Talk to your FAM account executive or look on FAM TPO. Um, you can also do a loan review process. You can do a closing process, just going through that. You know, there's things um, with e-close that are coming up and we have some exciting announcements with that that will be coming out shortly. Um, so going through that process and having someone feel comfortable with that is important. You can do team communication, you know, having meetings with your team. Um, you can have partner communication. You can do pipeline management. So there's a variety of areas where you can use virtual meetings. So let's talk about getting set up with Zoom. The first thing you're going to do is go to zoom.us and you're going to click on sign up. It's free. So Zoom offers a free um, platform. So you can use Zoom for free. There's a couple things you can't do with it and I'll talk about that as we go along. But really for what you're doing, especially for your one-on-one -on -one meetings with your borrowers, you can sign up and use the free account. So you're going to click on sign up. You're going to use your work email address. Now, if you already have Zoom set up and you're using it for like your virtual cocktail hours or your Gladiator boot camp or your virtual dates, that's fine. You can have more than one account. It's based on your email address. And so I recommend using your work email address because you want the emails to come from your work. And so you want it to be professional. You're also going to integrate it with your calendar. So whatever email you are using professionally and your calendar is linked to professionally, that's the email you're going to use to sign up. When you do that, you're going to get an email from Zoom and it's going to ask you to click the confirmation link in order to verify that that's you. Once you do that, then it'll take you back to Zoom, and there you're going to complete your information. So your name, your password, and then you click on continue. The next screen that you'll see at the bottom says save time by scheduling your meetings directly from your calendar. This is one of the greatest things that about Zoom is you can actually create the Zoom meetings from your calendar. I'm going to show you how to do that and talk about some of the benefits of that. So you want to download your email extension. 
depending on what email you use, if you use your Microsoft Outlook, you're going to download that. If you use your Google Chrome, then you're going to download that extension. And if you're not sure, then talk to your IT department and they can help you through that process. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to test your settings and you will start your first test meeting. So what I'm going through is going to show you how to do a test meeting, but it's what you're going to do every time you conduct a meeting. So you're going to click on start meeting now. What will happen is it'll pop up and it'll ask you, do you want to open your Zoom meetings? And you're going to say, why well, yes, I do want to open my Zoom meetings. And the next screen you will see will ask you how you want to join with audio. So if you have a microphone and a speaker on your computer, then you are going to join with your computer audio. Otherwise, you're going to call in. And it's the same on your phone. So the phone is going to ask you the same thing. So you decide how you're going to join. And then when you do that, this is what you'll see. And the little microphone, which you're using here, I have all of you muted, unfortunately. There's, this is a very popular um, webinar, so, you know, and we're all working from home. So dogs barking, kids, you know, unhappy or whatever. <laughs> so um, when you're doing one-on-one -on -one meetings, then the person's not gonna be muted, but you want to check your sound. So I always recommend to test this a few times before you actually do it and invite someone. So, you know, noon, you could set this up, send it to your significant other, sounds like you already have, but test it through your calendar, which I'm gonna show you how to do, and then test all of your settings. And so you're gonna select a microphone, you're gonna select a, pe a speaker. I have a few different options in here because um, I use, uh, uh, Sennhauser uh, USB headset, which is what I'm on right now, and that's what I use for my webinars. But I also have a USB plug-in, and I have a Blue Bottle mic because I do a lot of audio um, and voiceover work, and so it um, is it's something that. Um, I use. So if you have multiple speakers, and you may have one because you can see it shows my HD Pro webcam, and so there's a speaker that on my webcam, so I can use that. So you have to decide how you're going to use your audio. And then you can test it, and all you do is click on the link that says test speaker and microphone. And from there, the system's going to do a little ringtone and it's going to ask you, did you hear that? And you're going to say yes or no. If you didn't hear it, then you want to change your speakers or turn your audio up. And if you did hear it, then you're just going to click on yes. And so you're going to go through that process and you're going to go through the same thing for your microphone. So verify hearing your microphone, verify hearing your speaker. Next then, we are going to turn on your video. Now it defaults to having the video off. And so when you see that line, that red line right there that goes through, that means that your video is not on. So to turn your video on, you want to click on that red line to start your video. And then your video will come up. And there's me. And so now I have my video up. And now I'm going to invite others to the meeting and you're going to click on the icon that says invite and you're going to click on that little plus sign and then when you do that it's going to give you some options on how to invite someone to the meeting and so you see right here there's a meeting ID that's a meeting ID that you have for each of your meetings and so we're going to go through all of these options for you. So it says, and remember how at the beginning I said to connect your email to your um, calendar. And so the reason why is you can choose which email service to send. So the first thing in sending your email, you can click on your default email, you can click on your Gmail, or you can click on your Yahoo. So you're going to decide which one that is. and what happens is the system automatically creates an email for you. And in that email, it's going to have 
the link to your Zoom meeting and it's going to have what they call a one tap mobile. So that's a number that someone's going to call into if they're just calling in on their phone. You can set up to have a toll free number if you're so inclined. I don't know anyone that uses it, um, but it just defaults to a regular standard number that has an area code. Most everybody has free um, long distance on their cell phones, so it's not really necessary for you to use a toll-free number. So the email is going to come up, and all you have to do is just to input their email into this and then send it to them, and they'll have that information. The next way that you can send an, an invitation to them to attend the webinar or the, the meeting is to copy the URL. And the URL is the link that's going to get them to that meeting. And so you just click on copy URL and the system automatically copies the URL to your clipboard. So now all you have to do is go and hit control V or paste and paste the link into the email. So you open up your email, you say, okay, I'm gonna send an email, you copy and paste the link in there, that's the link that your borrowers are going to click on and they'll get into the meeting. The third way that you can invite someone is to copy an invitation to email. So you click on copy invitation and it automatically copies that invitation URL to your clipboard. So now all you have to do is open up your email, click copy and paste, and now that same information that it had brought up before in the email, it's going to paste that information into your email. And then you put in a subject and you put in who you're sending it to. Now, a couple of things on this because sometimes, as you know, it's difficult for borrowers to follow instructions. And so we want to make it very easy for them to get onto the webinar. So I recommend adding some instructions to this email. And how you do that then is to add the verbiage, click on the meeting link to join the meeting and click on one tap mobile to join audio. So you can put that in as part of your email. So I'm going to stop here. Bradley's asking, what is the difference from URL and invite? So the URL, and I'll show you. So go back here. So if you're doing just the URL, that's all you're going to get is just that URL, nothing else. So you're going to have to write the instructions in there. But if you're doing the invite, copy invitation, then it's going to copy all of this information in here. So it's going to have that and then it's going to have the mobile. And so that's the primary difference between those two. But that's why it's important to be able to add a couple of things. I wish Zoom had a little bit more information in there um, and it may be enough for you, but I just know I like to make things as simple as possible. And I also like to make things duplicatable. And so what I recommend is to write out some templates. And you can write out a template, put it into a Word document, save it on your computer, create a file, and it can just have it, you know, Zoom meetings or virtual meetings for your folder, and then have your different templates. You can have one for your application. You can honestly have one for your real estate partners. You could have one for closing. Just, you know, those templates, whatever you have, you can create. So I've written out this as far as a template for the initial application. And so this would be the email that I would recommend that you send. And it just says, thank you for your application. I'm sending you a link so we can have a virtual meeting to talk about next steps. Please follow these steps to join me for our virtual meeting. And here you have those steps. Step one, at the time of our meeting, you will click on the Zoom meeting link included in the email to join the meeting. Step two, click on one tap mobile to join audio. Important notes, and again, we want to make it easy for them, right? Number one, you can log in from your computer or your phone. Number two, if you have video capabilities, on your computer or your phone, you will be able to join me by video. I will be joining you by video. So why do I put that there? 
Well, I put that there because you don't want to surprise somebody and plan on having a video meeting and they didn't know that they were having a video meeting. So I like to let people know to be prepared. Now, for a lot of guys, not a big deal. You have a hat on or you're, you know, sporting your long hair as so many of us are now that haven't had a haircut for a while. Um, but for us gals, it's a little bit different. You know, we'd like to know at least we have our hair brushed. And so being able to prepare for that is important. And then let them know to be sure to have good audio and video connection for the meeting. The meeting will be conducted online or on your phone. So let them know that there are options. And then please email or phone me if you have any additional questions. I look forward to meeting with you. Thank you. And then your name. So this would be a template that I would write. And I would write one up for the initial application. I would write one up for documentation upload. I would write one up for, um, you know, I mean, you could even get into, you know, creating the journeys to where it's like you're done with your approval. Now we're going on to the next step. And you can just set up a quick little virtual meeting. Why do I think that's so important right now? Because we're living in a completely different world. And what has always been a very, um, I don't want to say cumbersome, but there's a lot that goes into getting a mortgage, as we know, and there's several steps. And now we've combined that with the uncertainty of the world that we're living in. So I really think for you to be able to have that virtual face-to-face -face meeting, to smile at them, to give them that confidence, will really be able to establish very, very, very strong relationships with your borrowers, not just for what they're doing, but for your referrals down the road. And so that's why I think it is so important to be able to do this. Okay, next, let's talk about setting up your calendar invitations. Now, remember I told you at the beginning, I love the calendar part about Zoom. It's how I set up all of my Zoom meetings, all of my meetings, and I do a lot of video meetings, so it's all set up through my calendar. And I love it because it goes onto my calendar and it goes onto their calendar. And so that way I know if I send somebody a calendar invite and I know that they've gotten it, I know they've received it, I know there's a more, a better chance and they're more likely to actually attend that meeting. And so I just find it easier to be able to do that. So the first thing you're going to do is you are going to go to your calendar and you're going to set up your invitation and you're going to create a calendar invitation. The way you normally would set up a calendar invitation or a calendar event, calendar event on your calendar. So nothing changes. But remember at the beginning, what did we do? We downloaded the calendar app and the app is now in sync with our calendar. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add the title to the event. I recommend including their name and your name and what you're discussing in the title. And I do that for two reasons. First of all, they're going to know who the meeting is with as a reminder that it's you. The second reason why it's going to remind you who the meeting is with. And so you guys are busy and we want to continue to have you be busy. And so this allows you to be able to move from one meeting to the next meeting without having to go back and maybe look at your notes. It's like, oh my gosh, who was this meeting with? Who was my last meeting with? But to actually give you that. So it's a great little way for you to be able to jump into a meeting right, right away and be able to say like, hey, Melinda, I'm so looking forward to talking about our Camp Gladiator. <laughs> that way I know, I remember, right? Um, so those are the kind of things that I recommend putting that in the title. Next, you're gonna add your date and time, nothing new there. You're going to add their email address or addresses and you can invite more than one person on. So if you want to, I know we're not into purchases right now, but we are going to move back into purchases. So if you want to invite the real estate agent on, then you can do that as well. Or if there's two borrowers, then you can do that. So put in their email address. Under location, you're not going to add anything for location. What you're going to do is you're going to click on make it a Zoom meeting. So when you sync your calendar in with your Zoom, 
then you're going to be able to make any of your meetings a Zoom meeting if you so desire. And so you just click on make it a Zoom meeting. Zoom will then insert the meeting link into the location. The next thing I want you to do is that template that you wrote, you're going to copy and paste that template into the description. So this was the example I gave you for your initial application template. You're going to open up that template that you've saved on your computer in your folder so you know where to easily find it. And you're going to paste that in there. So we have our title, Sue and Ginger Application Meeting. We have our time. We have the email address in there. Zoom has automatically input the link in there, and we have the in initial uh, application information that we've put in there so they know what it's all about. Now we're just going to click on Make It a Zoom Meeting, and then we click on Send, and that's it. This is what your borrower receives. So they're going to get a calendar invite at the date and the time that you have requested, and they can accept it, yes, maybe no, and so that way you'll know if they plan on being there. And then it's going to have your title information in there, so they're going to see what it's about. And then it's going to have join meeting. And it's also going to have your instructions with the information that you placed in the detail section. So again, it just provides them with some additional information, which is what we want. And you're going to go through, is this is what you've already written on your template. So once you write that template, it becomes copy and paste. Very simple. Okay, let's talk passwords. How many of you heard in the news, Zoom's not secure, people are... Uh, cyber bombing, Zoom meetings, and all those kind of things. And so your borrowers have probably heard that too. So from my understanding, there is not a security breach with Zoom, but your meetings can be public meetings. And the meetings, honestly, guys, it's just a series of numbers. That's all it is. And so what has happened is people have figured out how to write computer programs and it's just an algorithm spread and so they do that and then they run the computer program it finds a zoom meeting and there's a ton of zoom meetings right now and then they can get into the meeting so how you avoid that is you just set up a password and so you set up passwords for your meeting you can actually um, with the free account you can't change have a specific password it's going to randomly assign the password but that password is going to go to your borrower and they're going to see that password they're the only ones that are going to see that password because you email the password to them and so they'll get the email and the email will say the password is I always date myself when they say that does anyone else remember that um, and so that's how you make your meetings secure is you just set it up to have a password and it's easy to do that so you click on my account that's on the right hand side of your screen and then you click on settings under your personal profile and then all you do is just turn on the switch to require a password when scheduling new meetings and so what's going to happen is the system will generate that password for you and it'll automatically go into the invitation or the URL. So if you just copy and paste the URL, when they click on that, that's going to have the password information. So that's how you can make your Zoom meetings very secure. Not complicated there at all. So the next thing you want to do is develop a plan. Decide where you're going to use your virtual meetings. Get signed up for Zoom if you're not already. Make sure you're using your work email. Write out your templates. Decide where you want to use the meetings. Write out your templates. And then start holding virtual meetings. So the first thing is to sign up for your free Zoom account. Now, under the free Zoom account, you can have up to 40 people on a meeting. That's a lot to have on a meeting but you can have more than two. If you have over three people and you are one of those, so it's you and two other people, so if you have you and a borrower and a real estate agent, 
your meeting cannot go over 40 minutes long. They will cut you off. That's on the free account. If you think you're going to have meetings with over three people that are longer than 40 minutes, then you will want to sign up for the next step up of Zoom, which is, I believe, $15 a month. So not a huge investment for it. Um, but honestly, for the most part of what you'll be doing for your meetings, it's probably going to be one or two people, and it's probably going to be, what, maybe 15, 20 minutes? But if you are looking at going longer than that, then um, you, you and honestly, you can. You just have to sign off and sign back on. So there's ways around it. But otherwise, that they have everything else that you can do. Now, there is a difference between your Zoom meetings and your webinars. So I have talked to a couple of people that want to start doing webinars for educational workshops. And so I need to know of those of you who are on this webinar today, um, are you thinking that that's what you're going to be doing or are you interested in learning how to do webinars? For um, borrowers, you can hold workshops. You know, we used to do first-time home borrower workshops, um, but there's just so much we can educate on right now, and you can do it through a webinar. The difference between a meeting and a webinar is a webinar gives you a little more control. You can invite people. Um, you can collect their information. So just like when you registered for this webinar, we collected your information. And so we got your email, we got your name, who's your account executive. That way we know who's attending the webinar. Whereas for meetings, you're usually using it, you already know who you're going to be communicating with. Webinars is more of a marketing thing. And so I'm seeing a couple of you saying, yes, you'd like to know about webinars. Some of you say no. Um, Sonia wants to become an expert. Very good. Okay. So what I can do is next month I can add that um, to learning how to do uh, screenshots. So screen shares, not screenshots, and then how to do webinars. So if you guys think that that would be helpful for you, then that's something we can do because I think it's going to be a while before we start doing um, in-person workshops. And so this will give you an opportunity to be able to do some webinars um, and still keep people in the know of what's going on. And I think that's so important because, as you know, everything we've been going through, um, it's like daily program changes and, you know, Jumbo's gone. Now Jumbo's back and FHA has made changes and Fannie Mae has made changes and we're doing investment properties. Now we're not doing investment properties and we're going to be this way for a little while. So honestly, I think you could really, um, you know, continue to build your business. And even though, you know, we got to get through all of this as far as figuring out how to have real estate agents show houses and things like that. And, um, you know, just staying in front of your real estate agents right now, I think is very important. And um, this can give you the ability to be able to do that. So I'm saying you're interested in screen share, you're interested in both webinars. Okay, cool. So I can set that up for next month for you. So first step, and I'm not seeing any other questions. If you all have any other questions, please type them in there as I go through the next few screens, and then I'll be sure to answer those for you. Um, but the first thing is sign up for Zoom. It's a free account. If you don't already have one, set up one. Set up some for your staff, too. You know, I mean, I just had a conversation with my assistant this morning, and we talked about you know, when we're able to, and we're in Oregon, and so Oregon, California, and Washington have all decided that we're, they're going to have plans to, whatever those plans are, to go through at the same time. Um, oh, you can't see any text. Yeah, you guys see, can't see the text in the, in the chat screen, just I can see that from what you're typing, um, but I just did put all the information back up there again. Um, so anyway, as we move through this, you know, your staff has questions. And so being able to have meetings with them, um, to be able to set up webinars with them, I think is so important. And so I do appreciate you 
all being on this webinar today and taking your time to do this. I know you are all busy and I hope you continue to be busy. If there's any additional things that we can help you with, please let us know. Let your account executive know. We have a variety of resources that are available um, on the FAMU um, site, which is the Finance of America University. You can log in with your info, use the code my-fam-u-1 in order to set up a free account. It is um, password protected, so you're going to set up a password there. And if you do have any additional questions about that or getting set up, contact your Finance of America account executive. So we have um, all the webinars that we have done. I know I've been doing webinars with FAM for, gosh, probably three or four years now. So we have a lot of information in there. And now is a good time to really hone in on some of those skills. We will continually be adding new things there as well. And so I'll open up to questions. I'm not seeing any new questions in here. So you guys are super duper smart. Um, or you already got this figured out and you just kind of needed this as a brush up. Hopefully the step-by-step -step guide will help you. Mostly, you know, it's like I know you're getting the handle of virtual webinars or virtual meetings, um, but your borrowers may not be. So my goal in putting the information together for you is to be able to give you, a, and first of all, an idea as far as where you can use your, your virtual meetings and how to set up your invitations and how to invite your borrowers. So it makes it super simple for them. So create your templates, make it duplicatable to where all you have to do is copy and paste. It becomes a no-brainer. And all the information that I went through is in the handout. And so I'm going to post it one more time in the chat box, but I am going to be sending it out by email tomorrow and along with a copy of the recording. And make sure you register for our upcoming webinars because um, great information that we put together. You're standing out in your marketplace. We're going to have um, tech tools that engage. So things talking about slide dial, um, texting platforms, bomb bomb, things like that, and how you can utilize those. And then next week I'm doing a webinar on jump start to creating videos. Videos are very important. Videos are everything right now. And so you really need to look at how you can add videos to your business. My information is up here if you have any additional questions. If there's anything that we can help you with, um, you can reach me at ginger at edumarketing.com. Um, my company, we do video production, content creation, online learning development, and virtual production planning. So if any of those services would be a benefit to you, please send me an email. We can set up a call and find out how we might be able to help you. And then finally, um, when we went into our social distancing and our shelter in place a month ago, March 13th, um, I just decided, you know what, went through all of this back when we did the mortgage meltdown. And the one thing that I learned is we need positive messages out there. And so I started um, creating video messages with other trainers, speakers, leaders in the industry. And I've started a, a series. Um, we post videos Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and I'm calling it Flatten the Curve, Not the Spirit. So flattenthecurvenotthespirit.com. You can go there and listen to all the videos we've done so far. And just talking to leaders in the industry, talking about things they're doing with their team, things they're doing with their real estate agent, um, you know, things um, I have... Um, uh, Katie Lance, um, who's a social media uh, expert on the real estate side. She's going to be on Friday. I've got Nick Natton, who's a 15-time Emmy Award-winning producer. Um, he's on tomorrow. And so, you know, just little things to listen to. They're short. I mean, they're probably about 20 minutes long. So if you're looking for something that's on a positive side to listen to, then go to that website. Um, listen to some of the videos or if you know somebody that needs to listen to it you know we all have different ways of processing what we're going through and we've been busy fortunate to be busy but not everybody has been fortunate to be busy so maybe you know somebody else who could benefit from some positive um, information so that's where you can go and then finally um, I want to leave you with this um, 
and you are all very strong. Um, we're in the mortgage industry. We have got to be strong, right? But you never know how strong you are until being strong is the only choice that you have. And it's definitely one that is the only choice that we have right now. So I want to thank all of you for attending. I do appreciate you. I appreciate all you do. If there's anything that we can do for you, um, let me know. And so stay safe, stay healthy, wash your hands, and I look forward to seeing you on an upcoming webinar. So take care. Have a great day.